Education is an important asset to the mind of a child. As they progress through life, we see how they adapt and assess the world around them. This holds especially true for children with a traumatic brain injury, or TBI. A TBI, as described by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, is caused by a bump, blow, or jolt to the head, or a penetrating head injury that disrupts the normal function of the brain. Children can be prone to a brain injury early on in life because their body, especially the head, is still developing. The CDC claims 1.7 million people sustain a TBI annually, and almost half a million emergency department visits are made from children ages 0 to 14 years old. According to the New York State Department of Health, falls are the leading cause of hospitalized children due to a TBI. The most common falls are from one level to another, such as stairs, steps, or falls from beds. They also report that the most severe cause of a TBI comes from motor vehicle traffic-related injuries. They state 40% of children hospitalized due to a traffic-related injury incur a TBI, which includes vehicle occupants, pedestrians, and bicyclists. But it's what happens after the injury that can be concerning for parents of these children. Learning is an intensive process, not to mention for those with a traumatic brain injury. And for children, it's important that proper attention is given to adapt to these problems. Travis Jester was seven years old when he was diagnosed with having a traumatic brain injury. And now Travis just celebrated his 21st birthday and explains what he remembers from that day. The only thing I remember is coming home from school and running out into the backyard and sitting on top of logs, and that's all I remember. Fourteen years ago, after returning home from school, Travis and his brother Jeff went to the backyard just like any other day. Jeff began shooting his new BB gun through knot holes, but one bounced off and hit Travis in his left temple. Travis's mom, Desiree, describes her initial reaction. I just, I just remember him laying upside down in the wood pile and me, you know, just thinking, oh my God, and screaming for somebody to help. Nobody was home. My husband wasn't home. The neighbors weren't home. After being taken to Peninsula Regional Medical Center, they determined that the bullet had gone through Travis's brain and would affect his emotional responses. He was then flown to Johns Hopkins and sent to the intensive care unit, which he was in for two and a half weeks until he was able to breathe on his own. Then Travis and his family moved to Kennedy Krieger Institute, where he stayed for three months. Desiree reflects on the emotional state of her son after suffering from a TBI. So if he had to lift his arm to eat, he, that made him cry. If he had to go to the bathroom, that made him cry. Um, but once he kind of got over that hump, it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. He always smiled and always just... Whatever you had to do, they did it. Memory problems, like recalling new material, processing information, and behavioral performance are just a few of the cognitive effects of a TBI. In Travis's case, being reintroduced to Ocean City Elementary School was about being a part of the educational environment, not necessarily retaining the information. Travis and Desiree described the difficulty of going back to school. It felt really, it felt really weird. Because I just went through a long process. So I didn't even feel like I was even ready to go back to school. He only went to school like a couple of days a week just to get him back to his friends. And, but he wasn't doing anything really in the classroom. He was doing a lot of physical therapy and, and uh, speech therapy and any kind of therapy they had to offer, they did. Children can not only face difficulties in learning, but other behavioral and social challenges as well. Some parents may seek out the help of a speech and language therapist to help their child. These therapists help patients learn strategies for improving memory, problem solving and reasoning, as well as general communication skills. Kathy Luters has been an occupational therapist at Cedar Chapel Special School for nine years now. She explains the challenges of working with children with disabilities. What's different about children is that you have to first identify where they're functioning developmentally. We know what adults are supposed to be like. We, um, we understand that, but when you have a five-year-old that now has had a head injury, he's no longer a five-year-old. He's functioning differently. So how you interact and approach and, and communicate and um, maybe have to be different than what you would typically do for a five-year-old. Kathy has also worked for the Ranchos Los Amigos National Rehabilitation Center in Downey, California, where she worked with a pediatric unit that involves several cases of traumatic brain injuries. Kathy says that being a therapist requires responsibility and attentiveness to a difficult ordeal. You get a child in, you know that child belongs to somebody who really loves them. So your goal is to do everything you can so that that child can get back to where they are. And sometimes it's not easy. But in the end, to know that you had a part in that recovery and that you know you made a difference in that child's life, that's the best reward you can ever have.
Throughout the recovery process, many therapists play a vital role in helping patients. And no one has had a bigger part in Travis's case than his own therapist, who he says had his back no matter what. My therapist, um, Ms. Joan, she was one of my best therapists. She helped me through everything. And that was pretty good. Kathy explains what it means to her after helping a patient and their family cope with this condition. I had one of, one of the cases I remember was a 17-year-old who had a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And that, you never know how a 17-year-old could do that. But after getting to know him and his parents and being part of all that, um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. However, cost plays a huge economic role for these children and their families. The Center for Head Injury Services claims that the cost of a severe brain injury often exceeds $4 million, including emergency visits, therapy, and rehabilitation. They also report that approximately 1 in 500 school-aged children each year will receive a head injury severe enough to be hospitalized. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says approximately $9 to $10 billion is spent for acute care and rehabilitation of brain injury patients every year. And that total cost is what Kathy explains can change for every person. So much depends upon the type of injury, how long they're in acute care, how long they're in rehab, our health care system's changed and that doesn't happen anymore. So the amount of time that they're staying in each phase is shortened. But these kids are our future and they will pave the way for others to succeed as well. It's not the injury that makes people like Travis extraordinary, it's how they adapt to their condition themselves that truly amazes people. I'm just tell them it's a long process but you'll get through it fine. It's gonna take a while and you'll probably be okay. In 2011, Congress passed legislation that would allocate $1 million for brain injury rehabilitation. For Traumatic Impact, I'm Taylor Rogers.